Hello and welcome to Kids Club. From this, the Curate Study. It's great to be back with you again. My name is Reverend Mark and this is Sam. Number two, son. Um, so what are we going to do today? Well, if you weren't here last week, uh, this is our Kids Club, which we, this is only the second one, so you haven't missed loads and you can um, pick up on what you missed on the YouTube channel, which is called From the Curate's Study. So what we're going to do today is Sammy is going to read us a Bible story in a minute, uh, which follows on from the story we had last week. Then we're going to have some crafting and Sammy's going to lead us in a short prayer. So hang on a minute. I think I can hear somebody outside. Knock, knock. Who's there? None. None who? None of your business. <laughs> I do apologise, I don't know who that was. Very rude individual. Anyway, where was I? So, yes, if you went to church this Sunday, it would be Easter Sunday. Now, I don't know if you know much about Easter Sunday, but I bet you know a fair bit about Easter eggs. So why do we have eggs, or why are eggs a part of celebrating Easter Sunday? Well, it's because eggs are a sign of new life. That's why. Something new being born. You often see e chicks on cards that people give each other at Easter. Um, so, if you can remember last week's story, do you remember what happened? That's right. Jesus rode a donkey into a big city called Jerusalem. And I set you a challenge then, didn't I? I said to you, between then and now, if you see a donkey, have a look at the markings on his back. Because on the, on the donkey's back is the marking of a cross. And legend has it that is because Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem just before Easter. So do you remember what happened in our story? Jesus arrived, there was a great parade, and lots of people were very, very happy to see him. Except one group of people. They weren't very happy. That was the religious leaders. Because Jesus had become very famous and he was very popular. And they didn't like that. Well, shortly after that, Jesus got his friends together and they had one last meal together. And just after that is when our story begins. So if you listen closely now, because there might be some questions afterwards, Sam is going to read to us. After Jesus had last supper with his disciples, they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus stayed awake praying alone. Suddenly, soldiers surrounded them and arrested Jesus. They accused him of trying to become king. At his trial, the Roman ruler, Pontius Pilate, asked, Are you the king of the Jews? My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus asked. Jesus, ah, sorry, answered Jesus. Set him free, said Pilate. This man has done nothing wrong. But some people were angry. He called himself a king, they shouted. Crucify him! To please the crowd, Pilate ordered the soldiers to beat Jesus and then to kill him. They whipped him and made fun of him. Pretending he was king, they put a crown of thorns on his head and a red cloak around him. Then they made him carry a heavy wooden cross to a hill outside the city. They hung Jesus on a cross. His mother Mary and several other women wept at his feet and stayed with him until the very end. Then Jesus prayed to God one last time before he died. Father, forgive them, for they do not understand your dream. Two days after Jesus died, Mary and several other women went to the tomb where he had been buried. They were shocked to see that the stone that was covering the opening had been rolled away. They looked inside. Jesus' body was gone. Two angels in dazzling clothes said, Why are you looking for Jesus here? Jesus is alive. Go and tell the others. The woman rushed to tell the disciples. At, fir at first, no one believed them. A little while later, the disciples gathered to talk about what had happened. Suddenly, Jesus stood right in front of them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. The disciples were so frightened they clutched each other and trembled. But Jesus said, Do not be afraid, it is me. Look at my hands and my feet. Touch me. 
but they still could not believe that Jesus was alive. Give me a piece of fish, Jesus said. He took the fish and ate it, and his followers were convinced. Jesus really was alive and back again with them. They were so happy, they laughed and clapped their hands in joy. So, Jesus had died, but then he came back to life. New life. Do you see now why that's what we celebrate when we celebrate Easter? And that, my friends, is why we have Easter eggs. Now, many people in the run-up to Easter, uh, to help them remember Jesus' death and the burial in the tomb, which is pretty much like a small cave with a big stone in front of it to block the entrance, build what is called an Easter garden, showing the tomb and the area around it. And we've got what we've got now is we've got a craft where Auntie Sarah and her three lovely girls are going to show you how you can build an Easter garden if you want to help you to remember our story today. So watch it and see if you can make one too. Hello and welcome. My name's Sarah and I'm here with my three lovely daughters, Sophie, Edie and Dilly. Hello. Hello. And we're going to um, show you how we make our Easter garden. Now, we were slightly twitchy about doing this because we felt, are we being frivolous? And then we had a good talk about it and decided this is something that we do every year. Um, all the materials came from our garden or things we've saved. So you have to find joy in simple pleasures. So um, I hope that you'll enjoy watching us make our Easter garden and perhaps you'll have a go at home too. So we're going to start off with a tray that we've kept. We keep this especially for its purpose, don't we? We've got a block of floristry foam which I'm going to put over here. Now this is just to give a bit of height. We've got some glass jars, which we use a lot uh, for our Christmas flowers and spring flowers. And we've put a drop of water in them and I'm going to pop those on. Uh, we've got lots of moss. Oh, and that's Ida saying hello. That's Miss Ida Robin, who clearly needs to be heard. Uh, the moss has come from our lovely Auntie Claire, who gave it to us a couple of weeks ago. And we've kept it outside. If you haven't got moss, please, don't go out looking for it in the countryside. Just use something else. Maybe use some fabric, some cotton wool dyed green. You could use some marbles. Or you could use a very barky dog, clearly. She's desperate to say hello to everyone today. Um, so we say we're using moss. This has come from Auntie Claire. Some of it's come from our, our thatched roof. You might have a look in your grass. If you've got grass at home, you might have got some moss. So as I say, don't go out looking for it. Use something else if you haven't got it. We've got some gravel from our front driveway, which Dilly collected, so we can use that to make a path. We've got some of our favourite decorations, which we've had for many, many years. Our dear little bunnies, some of whom, as you can see, have actually lost appendages, um, but they're so beloved we have to use them, and some other little Easter decorations. We've got some flowers that Sophie and Edie and Dilly have picked from the garden. We've got forget-me-nots. We've got bluebells, we've got grape hyacinths. We haven't got any primroses, actually, but we normally put in a few primroses, perhaps a little closer to Easter Day. And then we've got our cross, which we've made with some cardboard, and our shell, which comes out every year to be the entranceway to the tomb. So one year Easter was almost off because we couldn't find our Easter shell. So that's very important, isn't it? Right, I'm going to pass over to you girls. And Edie, perhaps would you like to start by popping on all the moss so tell us Edie is there any great technique <coughs> to this oh bless you um, not really you just drop it over all over the place so doing a little bit of tearing yeah. okay nicely done so how would you describe this technique squishing mushing um, dotting dotting okay fair play so that's you've heard that at home that's breaking news today we will be dotting uh, with the moss so we're going to cover up the glass vases there just to keep the flowers fed with water, aren't they? To your left a bit, Edie. Oh, thank you, camera person Sophie. So Edie's making this backwards, really, so that we're working on the back. Poor little Bobbin. <laughs> I think she wants to be a human. Do you think she wants to go into the garden? Mm, maybe. Okay. Excellent. A good bit of dotting going on here so the block of foam is there just to give a bit of height oh do we need that much at the tomb entrance do we need, maybe need mm. to take a wee bit off there's a bit of a gap on this that's it so i'd call that a bit of squishing going on there yeah a bit of squishing 
excellent so that's i think most of the tray sophie can you see much of the tray from the front uh no we can't okay excellent good job <coughs> right dilly what are you going to add on next are you going, to, are you going to add on the gravel so that's the pathway up to the tomb edie do you want to add on the shelf so that she knows where the door actually, is actually that's a very good suggestion perfect well done Excellent. So if you didn't have gravel one year, we used rice, but that seems really wasteful now um, in these sort of very difficult times. So you could use, what else could you use, girls? You could use crushed eggshell, couldn't you? Paper. Paper, little pieces of paper. Yeah, that would be a good idea. So maybe you can tell some stones. Or soil. Paper. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, good thinking. How's that Gosh. going there with your, with your gravel? You're going to use every last scrap, aren't you? Right, pop that, well, there we go. Pop that bottle on side. So what about... Why don't you two pop? Should we perhaps put the cross in at the yeah. top of the tomb first? That I think if we give this a bit of a squish, that we might actually get it into the foam, which would be quite useful to hold it upright, wouldn't it? Yeah. Although that might not go entirely to plan, though, kids. Oh, maybe if it doesn't work, put it behind the Oh, actually, no, that's a really good plan. Why don't we stuff it in here? Look, how about that? So, does that work? Yes, that does work. Okay, excellent. So, girls, why don't you put some of the flowers in? I've you've got, got some scissors. Just you've got some scissors. Be careful with those scissors. So, what technique are you going to do for your put flowers? Them nicely. Put them in nicely. Are you sure you don't want to stop them? Mm. Or how? <laughs> I think Dilly's usual expression is plopping, but I'm not sure that that's entirely suitable for today. Do you need to cut any of yours down, Dilly? No. No, okay, fair play. Excellent. That's actually quite a thick stem. You might not get too many in. What about trying to find some thinner ones? How about some of the grape mm. hyacinths? The forget-me-nots are beautiful. Do you want any forget-me-nots on your side? That's looking great. And what you can do, if you're going to keep the moss damp, if you can give it a zhuzh with a mist spray of water, you could actually just poke the ends of the stem, some of the flowers, into your moss they will probably add a few primrose flowers perhaps a little closer to perhaps just add them on easter day maybe particularly if they're going into the moss how are you doing dilly it's what very pretty is it working what yes. about what about you could do a bit of trimage and trim the stem off and actually push some pieces lower into the ground how about that these are very pretty. So all of these bits and pieces, so if we save lots of bits from it, oh, look, as if by magic, here appears the primroses. Mm. Here's, yeah, an interesting fact. Did you know? You can eat primroses. Primrose and cowslip salad is absolutely delicious. Apparently, one of Disraeli, a previous prime minister, one of his favourite salads, according to his housekeeper. That's why I have a few primroses. Of course you, because you are so nicely. Oh, thank you, Dilly. Thank you. Okay, so let's pop up beautiful colours, aren't they? So just pop the little pieces in. How's it looking, Sophie? Are we are reaching a good coverage of flowers, or do we need a few more? It looks wonderful. <laughs> she says the nicest things. So we will have to mist spray our moss. Uh, and if you haven't got a little water mister, just put some water in your hand and flick. And that will just keep the moss hydrated and make sure that the flowers don't dry out too quickly. Actually, this is coming along very well, girls. Well done, you. So this is something we tend to make every year. Um, it, it's good to mark our festivals and celebrations. And making an Easter garden, I think, is such good fun and this will be one of the main decorations on our easter table this year now for the decorations okay what have you got then lead us through Bunnies. your decorations is that is that bunny missing just one ear hopefully yep. okay. that is two ears here ah. and then we've got a little nest to put in somewhere now not mm. always traditional people putting little lambs and bunnies and chicks onto their easter garden but um, this is just part of our Easter tradition, and these have all been given to the girls by lovely godmothers over the years, and they are put away carefully in a box every year, aren't they, Dilly? Yeah. And then, yes, of course, sorry, should I pass oh. the bowl over? Thank you. There we go. So we've made a little bit of a mess whilst we're making this, but 
you can't hurry perfection as we always say and um, it's just about doing what works for you and for your family okay girls are we nearly there just yes how's it looking Sophie because we're looking at the it back looks, of it at the moment it looks amazing is it is it getting oh well Ida agrees which is good <laughs> I think there's a bit of agreement so what should we do should we just do a little bit of clearing away now um, and what we'll do is later on when we position it we'll just make sure that we've got the moss covered right down to cover the edges of the trays we'll give it a good zhuzh a mist spray with water and then um, our Easter garden will take pride of place on our Easter table so we send best wishes to you and yours we hope you have a very happy and healthy Easter and uh, we hope that you will have a go making your own Easter garden so I'm going to say goodbye now say say goodbye girls. bye bye thank you ladies that was brilliant wasn't it now don't forget if that was all a bit too quick for you and if you want to make an Easter garden yourself you can pause this or watch it again and I would really love it if you would send me um, to the email address in the description box down below pictures of the Easter gardens that you have made that would be fantastic now before we go any further Sam is going to lead us in a prayer. This prayer is called the Easter Garden. In the Easter Garden the leaves are turning green. In the Easter Garden the living Jesus is seen. In the Easter Garden we know that God above looks down on us and through Jesus gives us all his love. Amen. Amen. That was a lovely lovely prayer wasn't it? So that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed the fun. Um, I apologise for the noisy man that knocked on the door and said the silly joke. I can't promise he might not be back again. And I hope you have fun between now and next week, trying out maybe making your own Easter garden. Please email me if you've got any comments or anything you'd, you'd like us to, to try maybe next week. But until we meet again, my friends, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. God bless you all.